Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Happy Sabbath, everyone, or Shabbat Shalom. Today is a wonderful day. Today is a day that the Lord has made, a day of rest when he calls us to come into his presence and to rest in him. We bless the Lord, and somebody probably would ask, um, how can a human being bless God, who is the giver of all good gifts? But a blessing is that knowledge. We are actually acknowledging that God is the source of all good gifts. God is uh, like a never-ending stream that provides constant um, flow of blessing to his creatures. Amen. Um, I'm sure that many of you today have great testimonies of his goodness, great testimonies of his faithfulness. We have gone through a week of work and he has preserved us. Think of those of us who have to travel every day to work. Hmm? protected us from accidents. There is just so much blessings, hmm? and there is so much we are thankful for. And as a result of that, we come to our God, our Creator, to praise Him and to honor Him. So I'm back. I'm Claudia Morgan Senior, an apostle and director of Living Waters Apostolic Healing Ministries. When we met last week, we are still in um, the study of the Torah in the book of Exodus. And when we met last week, I, we spoke about how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. And we looked at what happened at the Red Sea, right? And then I did promise that God's intent was to take them to Mount Sinai because it would have been at Mount Sinai, he would have come into this covenant relationship with the people of Israel. So we're going to be talking about that today, what it looks like. Ah, but before I do, I want to be reading from Psalm 119, um, 129 to 136. Psalm 119 is dedicated to the Torah, and it reads, um, I think I want to read it from here, if you give me a second. Psalm 119, <clears throat> I'm sorry, should I have found it before? Psalm 119, and we're going to be reading from verse 1. 20, 129, yep, 129, 136, 129, um, hmm, to verse 136, and it says, your statues are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words give, gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and plant, longing for your commandments. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let not sin rule over me. Redeem me from the oppression of men, that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. And when we read it from the Hebrew writing, it says, Rivers of tears flow from my eyes, because they don't observe your Torah. So, what is the Torah? The Torah, or law, as it's commonly called, 
reveal the heart and mind of God to his people. His will is his commandment, and his commandment is his law or Torah. Therefore, the law is divine and eternal since it comes from a divine source. It is also perfect as God himself is perfect. God's laws supersedes all other laws. It transcends, <clears throat> it transcends all areas of life, right? Um, it is the supreme law of the universe. Um, it is above our earthly laws, right? It speaks to all areas of life and to every living soul upon the face of the earth. It speaks to, it speaks to man's duty toward God and man's duty or obligation to his fellow man. So the Ten Commandments documented in Exodus chapter 20, as we know it, they are inscribed on two tablets, right? So we have five commandments on each. The first five speaks to man's relationship with the Holy God. And the second set refers to um, our relationship among each other. It speaks to how we live as a people in a community. It speaks to how we care for each other. That's what it is about. And um, and you you would remember in 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 um Jesus or Yeshua having this conversation with um, some of the people of his time, and they asked um, which which is the two which is which is the most important commandment. And he would have pointed to loving the Lord your God, <coughs> sorry, and loving people. Because the, 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 all the commandments, <coughs> when they are summarized, it, it boils down to these two, how we love God who is holy and how we have honor and respect to each other, right? And what we will see here is to regard, is to disregard God's holy instructions. It will result as a loss of God's glory on the earth. And what we will see is also a breakdown of morals in our society. So in David's time, I don't think it was different. And it would be upon that basis, David would have said tears of um, rivers of tears flow down from my eyes because they continue to 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 um to because they don't observe your Torah because they continue to break your holy Torah. As a result of that, the psalmist David cried. So when we read the book of Psalms and we see David making the point about God's precepts, his laws, his commandments, he is actually speaking to the Torah, right? Because that is where God is revealed, as we, as I said earlier, and where we get our instructions as how to live as a people. So in our last session, I highlighted Exodus chapter 6, verse 7, and uh, it says, the Lord told the children of Israel, I will take you out of I will take you out of Egypt for my people and and I will be your God right so God was not content to simply redeem Israel out of Egypt he wanted to take them as his very own people he wanted to enjoy a, 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 an intimate relationship with them and it like that of a wife and a husband, right? So in the Hebrew writing, in the Hebrew Bible, it is common to speak of marriage as taking, right? Taking. And in our own marriage, for those of us who are married, the vow we say, will you take this woman 
right? That's the question that is asked. Will you take this woman or this man to be your lawful wedded wife or husband? It's a similar thing. We're taking onto our own. We are owning this one. This is like saying this one, this man belong to me. My husband belong to me and no one else. Your wife belong to you and no one else. All right. So it, this is a legal binding agreement. God entered into a covenant with Israel. So a covenant is a contractual arrangement that specifies the terms and conditions of a relationship. It was never supposed to be a one-sided situation, but the two coming together in, 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 um, in, in walking in agreement to that which is um, specified or prescribed in, in the contract. So in fulfilling what the, what the um, Lord, what, what, in fulfilling what was said to Moses, because the Lord did say to Moses when he sent them into Egypt, he and Aaron, let my people go so that they may go to this mountain to worship me. Which mountain was it? Right? They had to leave, make the journey to a particular place, a particular mountain where God was about revealing himself to his people. So the people were about getting to their destiny after passing through the Red Sea. And here they are basically at the point where they are basically just leaving behind the culture of Egypt. They had to have the right attitude and they were quite repentant in heart to receive the instructions that would, um, that would establish them as a nation, a holy people to God set apart for his glory set apart from other nations because there were other nations around but God chose Israel for his purpose right um does it mean that Israel was better than any other nations we can't instruct the Lord and tell him what to do he he made his choice he chose that which he will and that, that was what he did with Israel. He chose Israel, a people for himself, for his glory. And so at Mount Sinai, God revealed to Israel, himself to Israel through his Torah, or what we call law. And do you know that um, law carries a connotation that we really don't like? A lot of times but from the Hebrew perspective it was never meant as law as we understood it they were basically called instructions instructions for us for the people as how they would live um, one commentator um, I like this one commentator says that when the children of Israel got to Mount Sinai, we read the activity at the time, the power of God that came down to the point that the people, they, 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 they were afraid and they said to Moses, you speak to the Lord for us. We are not able to, 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 to manage the kind of power and the glory that was active at Mount Sinai at the time. So one commentator says that when the Torah was given, not a bird chirped, not a fall flew, um, not an angel ascend, not a seraph proclaimed holy. The sea did not roll and no creature make a sound. Wow, that is just so powerful. It says all of the universe was silent and mute. You know why? Because the mighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, was at center stage. He came down to humanity. This divine God came down to humanity to make them his own. 
So in Exodus chapter 19, um, 4 through 5, we read, um, God is reminding Moses, or the people of Israel, he said to them, you have seen what I did to Egypt, and that I have borne you on the wings of eagles and brought you to me. And now, if, and that if is very important, we probably need to make a note of it, underline it. It is conditional. If you obey me fully, not partially, not half-heartedly, if you obey me fully and keep my commandments and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Wow. You will be my treasured possession. So although the whole world is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That was God's intent for Israel. If they walk in obedience, if they obey fully, if they receive the instructions that he was about to give to them, how they should live within that framework to be his chosen people. So, although God is the master of the entire world, he chose Israel as the object of his love for a purpose. It was for a purpose, you know, because we must now remember that the Messiah, uh, uh, well, the Apostle Paul wrote in, in um, one of his writings, I think it's Romans, he said that, that the, the scripture was in, entrusted to, to, to the Jews. They were entrusted with the word of, of God. So they were chosen as a nation for a purpose because after the fall of Adam, right, God has a second plan. He has a plan B. And the Messiah would have been ushered into the earth through a people, God's chosen people. So in the text, um, we, we, we note the word covenant, right? And the covenant speaks to relationship. A covenant put in place a relationship and out of covenant comes relationship. So what actually happened at Mount Sinai was a, a, like a wedding ceremony with, with um, Israel, right? And God, the creator. Right? It was a relationship with the one true God who alone would save them and sustain them. It was a relationship with the one true God who was able to sustain them right? as he led them out of Egypt, as he led them through the Red Sea. This God was still able to take them to the land of Canaan. Right? So, in maintaining this relationship, the rules were very important. What were the rules? They are documented in the Ten Commandments. So no rules, no relationship. So as long as Israel kept her part of the relationship, the Lord knew that she was a loyal bride. Mm? What man would want to know that his bride is flirting around? What man would want to know that his bride is kind of become a little common with everybody else in the community, right? What, 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 what man would want to know that his bride is not as set apart as she should? So it, was, it, it was the same, you know, for God and the people of Israel. So as long as Israel kept her part of the relationship, the Lord knew that she was a loyal bride. And in return for benefits and protection, Israel was expected to keep the commandments that we see in Exodus chapter 20. And so all the commandments documented in the Bible 613, right? 613 in total, um, they are all embedded in these 10 commandments. 
right? If we read through carefully, what we, we, we will find out that absolutely everyone connects to one of these. And that is very important. So the instruction the Lord gave Moses for the people was to, to, to design, to, to aid them, right? It was to aid their developmental stage in learning to know God because they were coming out of a practice, a culture where they didn't know him, right, fully. And it is very clear that the people knew very little about God, as I said, and his instructions. So it was important that, that they were taught these new rules, a new way of life for them to become a better people, right? Um, can you imagine Moses as a leader? How difficult it would have been, must have been for Moses. How challenged he must have been. It must have been for Moses to bring this unholy people into relationship with a holy God. He couldn't do it. So God himself would have to establish the, 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 the principles. He himself would have to establish the, the, the foundation on which this relationship was going to be built, right? So these people were so entrenched with their civilization of cultic worship and practices. It was a common part of their daily life. So now they have come to a place where they have to unlearn and relearn the new way of life or the new practices that was going to separate them from the other people or nations of the earth, right? The fundamental function of the covenant, you know, was to establish a community of interest between God and Israel, between God, be between the king, God, and Israel, right? It meant an intimate sharing of life, nature, custom, practices, where the will of the contracting parties ultimately become one. They become identical. You were not able to separate them. They were one. Huh? Is that how it is? The word of God said when you get married, the two become one. The two become one. Amen. So at the core of what was happening at Mount Sinai, was love, love, God's outpouring love to, to people. Love formed the heart of this covenant relationship. I think this is very powerful. The love of God, so rich and pure, measureless and strong. So in our regular English Bible, we see the word commandment. But if you read from a Hebrew context, you will see um, statements. God spoke these statements or instructions. And if we look at the first one, the first statement is Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. I am Hashem, your God, who has taken you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery from the house of slavery. God here is not giving an instruction, you know. It's not a do or don't. It's not do this or don't do this. It's not do this or don't do that. God is making a statement here. He said, he is revealing his true identity again. I am Hashem, right? I am I am your God. That's a fact. He is stating a fact. And here we see that the people were reminded to believe and have faith in God's existence. And that he is eternal and he has complete power. They were basically reminded of how the eternal God would have crushed the little gods of Egypt. How, how he would have powdered out the gods of Egypt. Right? as a result of the plagues that were sent on the land. So the point he's making here is that I am sovereign. I am your sovereign God, right? 
And until you are able to accept the fact that I am your sovereign God, the rest of instructions that is going to come after is more than not likely to be obeyed. If you don't trust me, you won't obey me. That's it. If you don't trust me, you will not obey my instructions. So God is making the point here that I am Hashem, right? That was not an instruction. That, I'm sorry, that was not one of the commandments. He is taking the fact of who he is, and because of who he is, then we do the following. We do the following. And so, um, as we, we, we have heard a lot said about the commandments, and I've heard a lot said about people, the command, I mean, um, can't save people. There was no time in the history of the Old Testament it was ever mentioned that anybody was saved by keeping the law. No one, absolutely no one is saved by keeping the law. Israel was redeemed out of Egypt by God's pure grace. What did they do? They didn't do anything. God literally take them out of Egypt, out of bondage and call them his people. It is the same for us. We don't work for our salvation. The Apostle Paul says it is not by works that we are saved. This salvation is a gift from God. As, as the law was a gift to Israel, our salvation is a gift from God and a gift that we must accept. It was God's ways of setting them apart from their pagan neighbors so that they would become a holy nation, a holy people. <clears throat> Last week when I, I, I did the teaching, I made the point that um, freedom leads to separation. And the separation leads to holiness, right? And today we can take it further to say that holiness is going to take us to a life of elevation. Holiness causes us our lives to be elevated, right? Um, moving from that of the earth, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are earthly, and striving for those things that are eternal. Our lives should be elevated daily in the word of God, right? Um, this separation was important for Israel as it is important for us today, right? Um, we are living in a time, you know, when much argument, there is much argument about God's holy commandments. And so we hear, are they still valid? Are they done away with? Hmm? When we read detailed events of what happened at Mount Sinai, when we, when we read how God came down, it is similar to what happened in Acts chapter 2. Because Acts chapter 2 is basically a repeat of Mount Sinai. The power of God came down. And we still have people questioning, is it still applicable? Are the commandments still relevant to us as a people? And somehow, I can't help but wonder if we are denying, yes, if we are actually, actually denying the eternal word of God. The Apostle John writes, um, no, John wrote that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. Who was the Word? Yeshua. He became the living Torah. He came down from heaven. He, the Word, made flesh and dwell among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. Right? So did he write a new commandment? No, he didn't. He didn't write new commandments because God's commandments are eternal. Each commandment communicates a piece of divine revelation. Each commandment speaks to a piece of godliness. It speaks to holiness, right? 
And so we'll see the first five set of commandments on the first tablet and the second. If we were to get into study them properly, we will see how each, each connect, right? They are divinely intertwined. They cannot be separated. So yes, they are still valid because it speaks of God. It speaks to who he is. And they were not just rules for governing human behavior. They were not just rules. The laws or the instructions of the Torah reflect God himself, the lawgiver. Amen? So, people of God, the Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God. And they were spoken aloud by God at Mount Sinai. And the word says, everyone heard. Everyone heard. Right? So, the commandments as they are, they are non-negotiable. They are non-negotiable and they are still relevant to our time. They are still relevant to our time. Yeshua came and he ratified the new covenant by the shedding of his blood, but he did not change the instructions as to how we should live as a people. And what we are seeing, because of all of this conflict about whether they are still valid or not, the world is at a state that is just, it is just, we are, we are just going down morally. I mean, there is just this serious breakdown of morals in our society, right? I want to share a vision the Lord gave me last July. I went through an experience that night as the Lord took me in a vision. And what he revealed to me, what he showed me was a man. He was in the fiery furnace of hell. And I was just looking at this man and I was just saw, I saw the, 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 the turmoil and the pain and the and, and all the things, the agony he was going through. But the amazing thing is that this man, he was not dying in the, in, the, in the fire. He was being tortured, but he wasn't dying. And that thing impacted me and I began crying out and I, and I asked um, and I asked the person who led me to see the fire furnace, I asked, what could this man have done? for this kind of punishment to be meted out to him. And a voice, a voice responded. It was, not, it was not the person who took me. A voice responded by saying, they continue to break my holy Torah. And so the point is people of God, the word of God is saying to us today, man will go to hell for breaking his commandments. Man will go to hell for denying his eternal word. Man will go to hell for breaking the instructions he gives us to live as a people, how to serve God and how to serve humanity. Hmm? Um, last week, Sunday, we, I mean, our nation was shocked by the brutal killing of a woman in a church service. Yes, it was terrible. It was terrible. And I'm making the point that the Lord, word of God says that man will go to hell for breaking his holy Torah because one of the commandments is thou shalt not kill, right? Unless we come to repentance, we are going to go to hell. Unless we turn, unless we make teshuva, unless we come back to that place of elevation, that is what is going to happen. It is sad that even in the house of God, there is no fear. There is no reverence for the house of God anymore. That people will dare to go into the house of God to kill. Right? And that's where we are as a people. That's where we are as a nation. And I feel that at this point in time, that the body of Messiah must come together as a united force in teaching the word of God in context as it is. 
We must come together as a united force to build the kingdom of God. And man must know that they will go to hell for breaking God's holy instructions. That's what it is. Talk about the law, right? Um, but, but I think what even amazes me more out of all of this, you know, I read this pastor, well-known pastor, who, who is saying that he feels, from what I understand from his writing, that pastor should have gone. Why do you need a gun? A gun is intent to kill. Why do you need a gun? Right? And then he went further to say, I don't believe that God would punish any pastor if a gunman come into his church and he's met with return firepower. I really don't think God would hold that against the pastor. Seriously, pastor? Are you serious about that? You need to go back to the, to, to the word of God. God is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, whoever. God's word is eternal. He is no respecter of person. So there, there it is. That's where we are as a people. And it was in the very same month um, that the Lord further revealed to me the state of the church. And in this vision, he showed me the church and he says, the church is malnourished. The church is malnourished. The church is malnourished. Why? Because the church, we continue to move away from our foundational principles. We continue to move away from the word of truth. We continue to break God's holy commandment. Right? And we feel that because you're a pastor or whoever, if you do it, then God is going to let you out. Oh, no. He's not going to. As a people, we need to come together to get it right, right? And so, and so, um, the Messiah came, Yeshua the Messiah came, right? And we are in a renewed covenant in him. What has changed? Hmm? The principles remain the same. The principles will not change. And the, 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 these instructions are no longer written on tablets of stone, but they are not written in our hearts by means of his spirit. They are written in our hearts and in our minds by means of the Holy Spirit. And that was what happened at Pentecost. The fulfillment of the prophecy of, of Jeremiah that the time would come when God in the future at some point in time He's going to pour his spirit in his people. The commandments is going to be now imprinted in our hearts, in our minds. And we don't, we can't, we can't do them in our own strength and in our own effort. We don't work for these things. But the grace of God is able to sustain us. The grace of God is able to keep us. The grace of God is able to help us. To live the way the Lord has called us to live. People of God, this morning, let us reconsider our ways. Let us reconsider our thoughts. The word of God said his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither our ways like him. He is the superior being. He is the eternal God. We exist because of him. And so I want to encourage us as a body of Messiah that we come into this truth, that we come into this knowledge, that this, in the same way he gave Israel, right, um, a set of instructions to live by, we who are not um, ethnic Israel by blood, but the Apostle Paul says, if we believe in the Messiah, then we are seed of Abraham. And so we have now become spiritual people in him. And the commandments, they are relevant to us as it were to them. Absolutely nothing has changed. I pray. I pray today that the spirit of the Lord will open up our understanding. And that we will no longer continue to rebel and to resent his word. But that we will now begin to walk 
in the newness of life as he speaks his truth to us by means of his spirit through his holy word. Thank you very much. I pray that you have been blessed. And again, I ask that you share this content with your friends, your relatives, whoever they are, on WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever social media platforms they are. Because we are in a time when the Spirit of the Lord is actively working, bringing the hearts of men back to him. Amen. We will stand with him. We will align our will with him. And we pray that his kingdom come and his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for listening. I pray that you will be blessed and that you are blessed. Amen.